Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, also Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. And you guys are not going to believe this. I actually recorded this on Sunday. Uh, and for some reason, I felt in my heart it wasn't quite right. And so I, one o'clock in the morning, I decided, okay, I just, I'm going to have to wait till Monday and record this. Uh, I even have frames open here where I'm getting ready to do a Patreon video as well. And I'm glad that I felt on my heart not to record it as of yet. And I apologize for my voice here. I am struggling a bit with my voice this morning. And my microphone is acting all kinds of nuts. So I hope that this is going to work. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so anyway. As you're looking here on the screen here, I have Isaiah chapter 61 open. And, um, and I can promise you it's not going to be a message what you would think at all. I, I really have been doing a lot of research again on thoughts, the battles that we face, uh, because we truly we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but it is the archons it is the principalities uh which if you look at that in the greek it is archaea it is the archons that you're battling against in the flesh there and so my my heart's desire has really been to help to to, to go deeper into this for those people uh well, i shouldn't say those people that suffer we all are suffering in the flesh but as i begin to prepare and study and dig deeper into the research of this, I, I came into this area here of the body that we're in, the flesh that we're in. And I was looking at the scriptures uh, in, in the case of Isaiah 61, Isaiah uh, chapter 42, and um, looking at the prophecies that apply to Jesus. And at the same to token, uh, I realize that we are imprisoned in the body itself. Uh, you know, there, there are in the Egyptian writings, writings it clearly identifies that. Uh, we know that the, the human body here is a prison in itself. Uh, even, even the fact that when Adam and Eve, when their eyes came open, they knew they were naked. Uh, when I say naked, though, the nakedness was not the fact that they didn't, they didn't necessarily have clothes, so to speak, but it was the fact that they were in a human body of flesh. Um, and so that was very troubling for them. And, and believe it or not, even in the New Testament, it speaks of that as well. So I, I'm going to start here with Isaiah 61. And, and then we're going into 2 Corinthians. Uh, then we're going to look at some more of the prophecies. Because truly, Jesus came to set us free. And we often think that, um, you know, well, I shouldn't say often think. Maybe, maybe it's the fact that the battles that we face in the flesh, we don't realize that the flesh is... Well, really and truly is what hinders us. It's the fact that we are in this flesh. And I think that if you begin to understand that, it might also help you better to overcome uh, when you're thinking about the thoughts that you go through and the, and the bombardment that we have and from every direction, the temptations, etc., cetera, uh, has to do with the fact that we are in this physical form that we're in now. Looking at Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Ruach Adonai Yehovah, Alai Yaon, Mashiach Yehovah, Oti. Okay, that's what it says right there. Because the Lord hath anointed me to bring good tidings unto the humble. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Uh, in other words, like almost like bandaging the, 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 the wounded of heart. To proclaim liberty. To the captives and the opening 
Now, they have in English here of the eyes, but it's actually the word for prison, the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So, if you, if you, and of course, if you look at this in the King James Version, it is the word prison there uh, for that. In fact, let me just, let's quickly, um, just for the sake of, of you guys being able to see this, uh, let's go there because uh, I want to make sure that you, you rec recognize that right there. Okay. And the opening of the prison. There you go. Right there. Picocoa. Uh, um, it's opening and, uh, and it's of a dungeon or a jail figuratively. Uh, and the opening of the prison. Now, of course, they put on here figuratively salvation from sin. Well, yes. Uh, so, and of course, as long as we're trapped in this body, this is where we continue to make mistakes, right? It's where we continue to sin. So, uh, that's why I find it interesting. And I also find it interesting, proclaim liberty to the captives. To proclaim the year of the Lord's good pleasure and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Now, we know that Jesus, when he read this, he read it in the synagogue. Uh, he was uh, up in Nineveh, excuse me, not Nineveh, but up in uh, Nazareth. And it says, as it was his custom, his custom. In other words, his custom was to go, when he lived in Nazareth, to read in the synagogue there. But this day here, he read this one here, and he closed the book, hands it back to the, to the minister there, and he said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Um, and that's what he'd come to do, was to set us free. If you look at 2 Corinthians, I think 2 Corinthians really opens the door to this. Now, I'm going to back up near the top in just a second here, but I want to read verse 16, 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5. Wherefore, hence we know, we know man after the flesh, yea, that we have known Christ after the flesh, yet no henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, and who hath reconciled us to himself, Jesus Christ, and given us uh, the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto to us the word of reconciliation. Now, this is extremely important right here. And if you'll notice in verse 19, not imputing their trespasses unto them. You see, the law, under the law, the law takes and it's, it tells you what's good and what's bad, what not to do, what to do, etc. But it really, the law governs the flesh. It is a carnal law that governs the flesh. Now, when we look at reconciliation, this verbiage here used in 2 Corinthians, and let me, let me pull this up also for the um, translation of this for you so you can see something that's important concerning this. All right, here we go right there. The reconciliation. It is an exchange. That is a restoration uh, is what that is. It's an atonement. Reconciliation is exchanging. It's it's you 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 become a new creature in Christ Jesus, and we only have the earnest of that because we're still in a human body. Let's go back and let's back up a little bit. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, talking about the human body, were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 
For this we groan earnestly, designed to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Now it might make more sense why the body here becomes a problem. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Clothed with what? The body from heaven. Now it might make sense when I said that in Genesis, when Adam and Eve, when their eyes came open, they ate of the course of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which they were commanded not to eat from. But nonetheless, when they ate from that tree, they realized they were naked. Naked because they were in a physical body. This body here, which was not the heavenly body. And Paul even brings that up when he says, If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. So, groaning earnestly. And there's another scripture that speaks about uh, they groan. Let's see. Let's see if I can find that for you quickly. Uh, hmm. Yeah, here we go right here. Romans 8.23 and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Think of that. For we know, backing up a verse or two, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that we that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. And not only uh, they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. The first fruits of the Spirit, in other words, you've already been filled with the Holy Spirit, but yet there's still a groaning within you. See? Because as even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption of the redemption of our body. For we were saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man sees. Why do we yet uh, hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? You see, we're battling in a body. We, we're battling in this flesh, something that is literally a prison that you're held captive in. So when the scripture says in, in Isaiah 61 that he came to put at liberty the captives, it's, it's literally a two-step process. Go back and let's look at that. Watch what he says in Isaiah 61. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives. It doesn't do away with the captivity of the flesh, but it's to proclaim that you are liberated from that and the opening of the prison to the, them that are bound. He made a way out. You're still going to battle thoughts. You're still going to have the bombardment from those archons. Why? Because they got, it's kind of like they, it's like being put into a programmed machine, so to speak, you know, and, and, and they can manipulate that. Uh, now, of course, we can bring the body into subjection. We have that, we have, because we have been set at liberty, as captives, we are able to make the body obey, but it's still a prison. Is it starting to make sense now? So we go back. If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being, uh, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now, he 
that has wrought in us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us the earnest of the Spirit. That's where you're set at liberty. Therefore, we are always confident in knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Why? Excuse me. We are confident, I say, and will rather be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and our trust also are made manifest unto your conscience. All right? And then we get we come back down again. We get down to verse 16 and, and, and going forward. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us unto himself by the Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation, the exchange. The ministry of reconciliation is to preach the fact that you're not going to be trapped in this prison for the rest of your life. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. That's the most beautiful part right there. Not imputing them. Even though, in other words, even though he came, he came down into the lowest dungeon, the human body, to reconcile the world to himself and not imputing our trespasses to us. He knows what it's like to be in this prison house. And he's committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you, Christ, eat and be reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us. Think, think of that one there. He made, he made him to be sin for you? How did he make him to be sin for you? When he came in a human body, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, right? Now, let's, let's look at another one here. Isaiah 42, verse 6. And the Lord have called you in righteousness and have taken hold of you of your hand and kept you and set you for a covenant of the people, for a light of the nations, or a light unto the Gentiles. A covenant a covenant. Am, a covenant of the people, a brit am, le or goim, and for a light to the Gentiles. Watch what he says. To open the blind eyes. Now, that's not just necessarily physical sight. To bring out of the prison, prison, excuse me, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Wow. Well, one, you gotta you gotta first see, you need to have your eyes open to recognize. What does the scripture say? He that has eyes to see and ears to hear. Let's see if we can find that one real quick. Okay, eyes, see, ears. Um, <laughs> the, the, boy, this is so true, right? But, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear, right? The, but, but over here in Mark, he says, uh, when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, why reason you because you have no bread? Perceive you not yet neither understand? Have you your heart yet hardened? Have your eyes, uh, having eyes see you not? And having ears hear you not? And do you not remember that way, hang on. That's not really the one I'm looking for, though. Hmm. Uh, 
maybe Acts 28, let's just see here. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And we had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. Right? That's why it says opening, uh, what was it there? We were looking at there, a light unto the Gentiles, right? That's where the scripture is, is fulfilled in that. For a light of the nations, the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, though. But the whole point is, is that prison is the very body which we are in. That is what has become the prison house itself. Uh, and again, we have, and this is where Jesus was reading it from Nazareth, as I mentioned to you earlier, Isaiah 61. Um, and we, we, we find that one there. Also, too, just in closing, let me just share with you. I, I also found it interesting that Joseph, when we read the story of Joseph, Joseph in Genesis chapter 40, we find that Joseph uh, is, of course, he's thrown into prison falsely. Uh, but no matter what he touches, it's blessed. No matter what he does while he's in prison, it always prospers, right? And he is a type of Christ in that regard there. Christ was placed in the prison, the body here on the earth. And I found it interesting as many times as I've taught on the similitudes of Joseph, uh, there was one that I've never uh, maybe fully grasped before, and that is the butler and the baker. The butler, of course, he is the wine bearer. He's the one that does the grapes for the king, and they're both thrown into prison as well. And Joseph, while he's there, you know, we know that they have the dream. He said he put them in the, in the ward of the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, and the place where Joseph was bound is where they end up being put at, right? Now, when, you, when, they're, when they're placed down inside of the prison there, they both have dreams about what's going to be their destiny, so to speak. The wine bearer is going to be restored back to his position, still give the cup uh, of wine, uh, and the baker is going to be hung on a tree. And when you begin to look at this also in light, uh, not just the fact of them being in the prison, and this is the main reason I was looking at this, is because Joseph was in prison. He's likened to that being in prison. It is truly a type of Christ, but it's also a type of the communion itself because of the wine and the bread, right? Uh, in this case here, the butler and the baker and what they actually both offer. And... In their dreams, we find, though, that the baker is hung, and he's the one that does the bread. But if you remember in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I believe it is, and I think I do have it up here, uh, where Paul reads, he says, And we had given thanks, we, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, see, the wine is not broken. The wine is his blood that is poured out. Okay, but it also represents the spirit that would come back upon the people. Uh, he said, but he, but he told them to do this as often as they do it. They do it in the remembrance of him. And when you look at the butler and the baker there, the baker, of course, is, like I said, he is hung. And Jesus Christ, his body is torn and broken and hung as well on the cross. And I just really found that of an interest as well, especially in light of the fact that he's in the prison. And yet we see the similitude of the butler and the baker, the wine and the bread, the, 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 the Passover itself. And I wanted to be able to share that with you. Um, and to another thing, uh, I'll, I'll share just in closing, too, and we're looking at Revelation chapter 6. I, I, I looked, and behold, a pale horse, his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. Hell being the grave uh, or, or death, right? Hades. And, and let me just see. 
uh, which one that the book of Revelation here uses because I do not recall. I want to make sure. Oh, chapter 6 is where we are. 6 and verse 8. So I want to just see if that's the term. There's a reason for this. Um... Let's see here. Me set on him was death and hell. Here we go. Hell, Hades, right? Hades, is, which is the grave. Uh, you know, the very word Hades is used in some of the uh, Egyptian writings as well. And again, it's used as a prison. Uh, the, the Hades is used as a prison and they type or like the body as that prison and the reason why i thought this was interesting here was because hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with a sword so the reason i brought that out is the fact that hell is referred to in the second part of the verse and power was given unto them as individuals having a part over the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and these uh, and with the beast of the earth. So when hell follows, it's not a very good thing. Mm. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. I hope this is a blessing for you in some way there. I want to thank you for listening. And uh, as always, ab above my head, there is our mailing address. Uh, and of course, Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box. 156 uh, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. If God lays upon your heart, you want to support the work that we do, we greatly appreciate it. And our, our website is RayleighNewsLive.org. You can donate right there online. And we thank you for your kindness for this. And uh, I've got to run into a doctor's appointment this morning, but when I get back, I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about uh, some of these things here. You know, we've had like four different asteroids here in the last uh, couple of weeks there. And in, in all the cases there, we were having sonic booms with them. That's kind of, uh, not asteroids, but meteorites. Uh, unusual to have that many with sonic booms. If you recall, though, we talked about that on Patreon, that more and more you're going to see meteorites that have sonic booms. I totally forgot that I brought that out a while back there. So I want to share that with those of you over on Patreon. So I hope it'll be a blessing unto you as well. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Don't forget EMP Shield as well. Uh, something you might want to consider. We have visited the EMP Shield uh, factory, spoke to the scientists and stuff there, the engineers. And that's going to be something we'll be bringing out in the very near future for you. I think that will give you a lot of confidence and a lot more reason why you'll want to do this. Good afternoon.